So what we have here is a used, uh, it's a 2023, it's a Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. And this is just a, a beautiful vehicle. Just love this red color. Uh, I'm going to do a quick walk around and just kind of point some things out. It's only got about 8,000 kilometers on it. Uh, so we're quite fortunate to get this uh, get this vehicle in. I'm pretty excited about it. A couple things I want to point out. Um, you'll notice across the front, it's got the 3M protection that's been added right from the, when they bought it new. You can kind of, I don't know if you can see the line there or not, but there's a little seam here. So this has got uh, like an extra film way to help protect the paint. Also on the sides, it's got the mud flaps that they added to it from the factory. There's a set there. There's another set on the back as well. Across the front, uh, it's got these uh, nice LED fog lights um, built right into the front bumper. It's got the 3.6 liter V6. Gets phenomenal fuel economy on the highway. Lots of power too if you're looking for, you know, if you need to have a little bit of extra jam. Uh, it's just a fantastic engine. It's been around for quite a while. Nice chrome tow hooks you'll see here. Kind of dresses it up a little bit. You can just loop your tow rope over the front there if you need to. Uh, on the sides here, we'll kind of down, go down this way. You can see it's got the nice wheel up moldings built right in from the factory color matched so these are if you ever you know scrape them or whatever you can just pop these off and then get them repainted and put them back on uh once again we, the front mud flaps we kind of talked about that already on the inside uh heated leather seats Got like the little overland logo kind of embossed right in there nice stitching little uh little vents in here too so if you look at the seat they got like little holes in it so if you turn on your uh, cooled seats it'll kind of blow air through those holes and help cool you down Power seats for both sides, driver and passenger. So this has got the recline forward and back, and then it's got your lumbar support here. And this just pushes like a little airbag out there. Not only does it push it out, you can also adjust where it pushes it out, so you can kind of move it up and down. I've ordered some new floor mats for them. This, uh, like there's kind of mismatch for some reason, the floor mats in this vehicle. Uh, I do have a set of all, all, um, all WeatherTech mats coming for it. So as soon as those get in here, I'll be putting them in as, as well. Uh, inside, you can kind of see those are all your owner's manuals and everything are right there. A little bit of a glove box, some nice storage area, kind of keep everything out of the way. It's got kind of that uh, burnt wood look on the dash, kind of blends into the door trim as well. Power windows, power locks, Alpine sound system, so if you want to crank the stereo, you can. Lots of good tunes there. In the back seat, uh, I'm going to show you some things in here. I want to, I've kind of set this up already because it's kind of hard to do when you got one hand, but you can see how this seat's reclined relative to that seat. So that seat there is the straight up and down, like if you got like a kid in a car seat or whatever. But these do recline so you can get a lot more comfortable if you're going like on a long road trip for the rear passengers. Also has a little fold down armrest. This kind of flips up out of the way. So now you can seat three people back here if you wanted to. So that's certainly an option for you. In the center console, we've got some USB ports here. We also have the heated seats for the rear passengers. You can kind of click those on so they get the comfort too. you got a little power point there too. If you want to plug in your laptop or whatever, you can do that. Same thing with the rear doors. That uh, wood trim that we talked about earlier kind of carries through. A whole bunch more speakers, lots of storage areas, pockets. I want to point this out too. You see it's got a power lock button for the rear passengers. I always thought that was kind of a nice idea. Normally you only see those on the front. On the rear, we got the rear mud flaps. If you take a look across the back, you can see it's got the dual exhaust ports on the lower bumper. It looks really cool. In behind here, if we pop this panel off, there's a hitch in all your trailer wiring in there. So if you do want to pull a trailer, you can. Um, uh, I won't pull it off because it's kind of hard to do with one hand. You've got to kind of reach under there. But it does have that as well. You would need to add a uh, trailer brake controller. It's going to be rated for probably, a, I think, anything over 1,000 pounds. You're supposed to use an electric brake. So if you're just pulling like a little light utility trailer or something, it would be fine. But if you're pulling anything bigger than that, uh, let it give us a call and get you a price on putting uh, an electric brake controller in. In the back, a couple more things I want to point out. It's got the power lift gate, so if I press that button, it's going to close the rear gate for us. Got a little power point in here. If you want to plug something in, it'll just run. This runs straight off the battery, so if you leave something plugged in there, it'll actually kill your battery overnight. But it's kind of nice. You don't have to turn the, hit the key to start it in order to use it. Little grocery bag hook here. So if you get your grocery bags, you can kind of loop them over there. It kind of keeps everything from falling over. Storage bin down below there for some stuff. Kind of keeps it from rattling around. You'll also see it's got the little hook there. Okay. There's another one over here and another one over here and another one up in that corner. So if you had something back here that was really valuable and you didn't want it sliding down, you can kind of use those to tie it into place so it's not, you know, bashing all over the place when you hit the brakes. Got a subwoofer built in here for your extra base. Underneath, we've got a full-size spare tire, and you got nice storage bins under here, too. You'll see on both sides of the, of the wheel there, as well as up front, there's a little cubby hole up there. So if you've got something you want to keep in here, 
Um, there's your jack and your tire iron over there. But if you got something like a roadside safety kit or some extra pair of work gloves or something along those lines, it's a great place to kind of store that item and then when you need it, it's there. Also, if you look at the back of the seat, you got those little square things there and there and there. Okay. Uh, if you've got a kid in a car seat and you're still using those, uh, I feel sorry for you because I had those several years. Mine are all big now. But uh, you can kind of loop it underneath that headrest and kind of cinch it into there and use that to hold the, the seat nice and secure. Yeah, it was a great day when we went from the car seats to the booster seat. I still remember that day. I was pretty happy about not having to plug the kids in all the time. So you can see how that back hatch closes. Uh, a couple things too, it comes with a panoramic sunroof. You can see like this here, there's all this glass. That's all uh, open to the outside. Kind of give you a shot here from this side so you can kind of see from the inside how, how bright that is. So it makes it a lot nicer when you're driving for as, as far as, you know, being nice and uh, warm on the inside. Can you get that extra heat in there, kind of warms you up. Um, same thing with the door trim on this side, just give you a quick shot of that. This seats do fold down. I should probably pull you, show you that, I guess. You just pull this lever here, and then the seats, you can see how the headrest folded forward, and they just kind of lay down. And now it makes it nice and easy to kind of put your stuff all the way into the into the back area. Uh, if you got something a little longer, say you got a, you know, a couple hockey bags or something like that, some long hockey sticks or something like that, makes it easier to load. Up here we got power windows, power locks, power mirrors. We also have memory seats, so they got you can set up to two different drivers. Um, basically what that does is if you hit the, the settings for one or two, it'll allow you to change all your seat settings, radio station, your mirrors, all that kind of stuff. And it just kind of programs everything for your two different drivers, so it makes it a lot easier when you hop in. You can even program that to your key fob if you have designated key fobs for each other. That way when you hit the unlock button, the, the vehicle knows what it needs to do. Power seat for the driver's side, same as the passenger side. Um, we're going to hop in here now. We're going to look at some of the buttons. So a couple things. Um, emergency brake. This is how you use the e-brake. Just pull that on. That engages your rear e-brakes. Take it off. You put your foot on the real brake and then push that forward and that'll disengage the e-brakes the e for you. That's your hood release. Headlights are here. You just leave it in automatic mode. As soon as it's dark enough out, your headlights are going to automatically turn on and then you can engage your fog lights just by hitting that button there. Got two dials. This one here is for your ambient lighting along your feet, so in your foot wells and stuff like that when you're driving at night. And then this one here is your dash brightness for your speedo and that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's fire it up and have a look at some of the cool stuff on the inside. Turn that radio down a little bit. Okay, so inside, this is kind of your digital dash. A couple things I want to point out. Nice big tack, nice big speedo. But you can also activate, oh, it's, I folded the seats down, so it tells you your rear, your seats may be folded down, not latched properly, so you got to go check them. Uh, but you can kind of see you got your speedo there. We can also toggle between the two. This is your adaptive cruise setting. So if I turn on your adaptive cruise, you can see how you got these bars here. What you're doing is you're setting the distance between you and the vehicles in front of you. Okay. Um, what it, what's nice about that, I'm trying to get a shade here so I can you know, put the visor down a little bit. Give us a bit of shade, hopefully. There we go. Um, and you just set that distance. And then when you're cruising down the highway, it'll keep that set place. Uh, uh, space between you and the vehicles in front of you and then if you hammer on the brakes or whatever like if the guy slows down in front of you it'll actually slow down the vehicle unless you hammer on the brakes of course and it'll disengage the uh, cruise control also have a cascade button this kind of gives you a summary of all the screens and everything that's going on so it gives you your tripometers your fuel economy um, got your stereo all that kind of stuff so it just tells you what's being playing on the uh, right now on the radio we're going to go to the next screen um, Take off that cascade there. There we go. So the next screen we've got is our fuel economy screen. Uh, this is kind of a summary of all your gauges, like your transmission, oil temperature, all that kind of stuff. Uh, oil price, like your oil is good for, it's 85% before your next oil changes are due. I think this vehicle comes with a free, fuel free oil changes too, if I'm not mistaken. It's got the Jeep Wave program. So I think you get, I can't remember if it's six or nine. Like I said, confirm with us before you before you buy it. We can pull you a copy of what's left on it. But there's, it comes with a few oil changes. Tire pressure, start stop. Uh, what this talks about is if uh, you're sitting at a in a traffic, the vehicle will actually shut itself off. Uh, then when you take your foot off the brake, it restarts. That way it saves you saves you money uh, on gas. This is your four wheel drive. You got automatic, full time four wheel drive, that kind of stuff. You can also set the different types of terrains. Okay, so what you do is you use this toggle switch over here and you can kind of change with the settings that you're driving in. So you can go like rock climbing, snow, that kind of stuff. So it depends on what you're driving in. Vehicle dynamics, this tells you how much power is going to the wheels, that sort of stuff, what your steering angles are. And this is how 
steep of a hill you're climbing and how steep of a side hill you're on. So it kind of gives you that information as well. Uh, radio station tells you who's singing, all that kind of stuff. So it kind of gives you an idea what's going on there. Stored messages would be like if it had a check engine light on or something like that. And here's where you can go in and program it. You can change your clock to a different thing if you want. You can change the compass over here to like fuel economy screens. Lots of different settings. You can kind of go in and customize it to however you like it. This is probably the one that I would use the most if I was driving because I like a nice big tack and I like the, the speedo there as well. So, okay, uh, over here we got our cruise controls. We kind of looked at those already. You got your normal cruise. Okay, and then we've got this button here. That's how you set your adaptive cruise. Think of it like two separate entities, okay? You can use just normal cruise if you like, um, although I don't know why you would want to do that. I think you just probably want to use the adaptive cruise. I've used them before. Uh, it's just a fabulous technology. It makes it really comfortable to drive. We've also got some paddle shifters here for shifting up. Another one here for shifting down. So if you go into manual mode, you can kind of use these to be a little bit more sporty driving if you want to kind of shift it yourself. It's kind of handy too if you're going down a steep hill and you want to let the engine hold you back, you can use it for that too. Over here, we're going to go to our home screen. We've got a nice nav here and our radio station. And then if I had my phone paired up, it would show up there. You can go to your media screen. This is where all your uh, music is. Or oh, I should probably point one thing out here too before we get too carried away. You can also go in here and customize these. Okay, you can just change them if you don't want that screen there. Let's say we want our radio station on this side. And let's say instead of the suspension, I want to put, uh, I don't know, my favorite phone calls on the other side. So what that'll do is if I had my phone paired, it'd show me the uh, most, most dialed out numbers that I have on my phone, it would show up over there. Uh, media, okay, so we got AM, FM, Sirius XM, all your different radio stations. Uh, you can also change your import uh, where your sources come in. So this is all the different ways you can get your vehicle to have play music. There's Alexa in there as well. Another option you've got is use your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto app on your phone, and then it'll override this phone button here. And then it'll turn, it'll basically mirror your cell phone up on this touch screen for you. So like if you're using your Apple Maps, uh, your text messages, all that kind of stuff just shows up right there for you. Here's the factory nav. If you want a little bit bigger screen, you can access that. This is gonna, uh, you can kind of see where we are in High Prairie. We can also zoom in and out if you like. You can kind of drag it around, see what's coming, that sort of stuff. There's the whopping town that we have. You can see it's pretty hard to get lost. What's there? 12 streets there. Anyway, so you can kind of check around that. Uh, next screen we've got is the uh, off-road screen. So here we got our off-road pages. And what you can do is there's all kind of cool screens you can access in here. There's your vehicle dynamics. So if it tells you if your transfer cases are locked or not, uh, you can see if your accessory gauges. So this is basically a, a bigger version of that other screen we looked at earlier. Pitch and roll, same thing. We kind of looked at that on the dash, but you can also access it through here. You can select your train management. So I'm just gonna flick it here from automatic to, to uh, sport mode. You can see it gives you like a little racetrack down below, kind of changes the terrain. If you go to snow mode, you can kind of see the snow in the background, kind of tells you what's going on, just some different stuff. We can also play with our suspension settings. Uh, we can raise and lower the height through here if we like. Uh, it just tells you where everything's at, that sort of stuff. Okay, in the, under the apps, uh, this is basically where you would program your vehicle. You can access your nav settings, all kinds of stuff, all right through here. It allows you to kind of go in there and program everything the way you'd like it to be. Down here, we got some more buttons. We got heated seats, heated steering wheel, cooled seats. Just press them to turn them on. Kind of like these buttons rather than using the uh, touch screen. That way you can kind of leave the, the home screen alone. And you can just reach down here and hit these. Uh, this is a cool button. This is the max defrost button. If I'm to hit that, uh, what it'll do is it'll crank the fan up as high as it'll go. It'll turn the heat on as high as it'll go, and it'll start blowing out the defrost button. What's nice about that is with a lot of the digital screens on these newer vehicles, you got to kind of go through and crank them all up. This is just a one-hit button. Boom, you hit it, and it's done. Rear defrost, uh, you can turn on your auto climate control. Basically, what an auto it's going to do is it's just going to automatically go to whatever temperature you've got it set at. You can see we've got it set right now for 21. And I can just hit this minus button here and drop the temperature. You can also change the temperature for the passenger too. So if you want the passenger to get a little bit more heat, they can do that. And the driver gets a little bit more cool air. A uh, nice little tray here that you just hit this button. She slides open. Comes with a little towel here to kind of clean up all the, the uh, black piano finish. You can use that to wipe everything off or the, or the nav screen as well. USB ports to plug your cell phone in if you want to charge it. 
Uh, there's some little storage areas down there too. You can kind of see places to store your stuff and kind of uh, keep some glasses or whatever you want down there. Close that button. Okay, um, this is the button I was hitting earlier to change between the snow mode, that kind of stuff. 99% of the time, you're just going to leave it in auto mode. Let the vehicle figure out if you need to be in 4x4 or not. It kind of does its own thing. Um, it's just if you're going like rock climbing or something, you want to use that. Over on this button, if we hit this button up and down, you can raise and lower the suspension, which is really handy if you've got like uh, if you're out rock climbing, you know, you're going to want to be able to climb over boulders. You're going to need more clearance. Or you can go all the way down really low if you've got like a, like a garage door or something that's a little bit awkward to climb in and out. It's kind of nice to be able to have that ability to lower it down. The other time I've seen people use it, if you've got like an elderly parent or something like that, and, they, and they, it makes it a lot easier for them to get in, if it's nice and low to the ground, they don't have to lift their, their legs up as much to climb in and out. Four low button, we can engage that too if we need to engage the four low. And we've also got the, um, this here is our hill descent control or our off-road use. Uh, what's nice about that is you can click that button and it's like a slow motion or like a, a slow cruise control. So if you're driving down like a bush trail or something, you can activate that and it'll kind of make the vehicle go like two miles an hour, three miles an hour, whatever you set it at. And then it'll just kind of crawl along the back trails. Now we don't have to keep your foot on the gas or nothing. Another little lid, this pops open. There's your places for your coffee. It's got some nice little um, light in here, two LED lights up at night when you're driving so you can see what's going on. In here we got uh, this lid opens up, a little storage area, nice place to keep some stuff all the way. It's kind of felt line too, so you won't get scratched up. And then you got a big storage bin here if you need to kind of throw some extra odds and ends in there, keep it out of the way. On the overhead, I want to show you some more things. A um, couple things. First one here is this just pops open. That's a place for your, uh, you can keep your sunglasses in here. Once again, this has got a nice lining in it too, so your glasses don't get scratched. We can open and close our panoramic roof from here. We can tilt our sunroof from here. And we can also close this uh, visor. I'm just going to hit the close button. You can kind of see... That thing sliding closed there. Um, and that's pretty handy if you got like a little guy or whatever, say he's, uh, you know, he's in a car seat and they're kind of cooking. I like to leave mine open because I like to get as much sun as I can, particularly in the winter time. So I leave, usually leave it open with the sun kind of beat on me. Um, I just find I feel better when I get more vitamin D. So I try to do is get as much of it as I can. Uh, a couple more buttons. If we hit this, it'll power open the rear tailgate and it'll open, like open right up. So it's like a trunk release except for the rear hatch. And then we've got this button here for the assist and the SOS. If I was to hit this SOS button right now, it'll alert the RCMP and they'll show up. So if you're like in an emergency situation, need some help, you can hit that. And then this is a, a subscription-based thing, the Sirius XM Guardian. I want to say it's like 20 bucks a month. Basically what you get with that is an app for your phone. And then what you can do is you can use it to start your ve uh, vehicle up if you want, lock your doors, you can track your vehicle, like if it's stolen. Uh, I think you can put I think you can put settings in too. Like if your kids borrow it and you tell them, hey, listen, you can't go, you know, out of town or whatever, it'll shoot you an alert and tell you if it, if the car's left its de designated area. So I think there's some things like that that you can do. Um, depends on the vehicle and the package that you buy, but you can check that stuff out and and uh, decide if it's worth it or not. Um, my wife has it on hers because uh, when she's working in the hospital, she can start her vehicle from her phone and she quite likes it because she can't see the vehicle. I've had it on my demos. Um, I never use it because I can just see the vehicle wherever it's parked and I can just hit the button. So it makes it a lot easier. Okay, I'm sure I missed a bunch of stuff. I tried to go as fast as I could, so we did kind of cut most of the stuff. Don't bore you too much. Uh, but if you're interested in getting yourself into a new SUV, the Grand Cherokee is just a fantastic unit. I mean, it's been the best-selling SUV for, I forget how long, like forever. Um, but if you come down and take this one for a spin, you're going to see why. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous vehicle. So give us a call. Let's get together, have a cup of coffee, and uh, we'll send you home in a new Jeep.